Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Paul, in, in this letter to the church at Philippi, he, he was expressing gratitude to the church at Philippi because he, he was sending them uh, thanks for because they had sent him a care package uh, in his ministry to help him out as he was traveling. Uh, Paul was not at this time requesting another gift or asking the church for anything. He was just being thankful for what he had. Uh, Paul had learned to be content in whatever state he was in. Paul was a, a man who was uh, very uh, well educated. He was probably very wealthy. He had everything that he wanted. We know from uh, in the book of Acts, Paul had authority in his life. He could go to the uh, leaders and he could request uh, uh, basically a, a death warrant, uh, in a sense, for Christians. And he pr persecuted them. Uh, he was there when they stoned Stephen to death. He would do whatever it, he needed to do to eliminate the, the Christian people around him. And then he had the conversion and uh, met Jesus Christ. He received Him as Lord and Savior of his life. And he gave up everything he had. And that's what happened to many of the Jewish people. When they received Christ, they lost their livelihood. They lost everything they had. They had to give it all up to follow Jesus. And Paul had done that. But in, in this letter, he was expressing to this church how thankful he was and how blessed he was to be in the ministry because they was willing to support him and, and help him out. And, and he made this statement, the, the scripture that we read, my God shall supply all of your need. He was telling the church, because you've been a blessing to me and because you've given to me, God will supply your every need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Paul had given up everything, as I said, to follow Christ. He didn't know where his next meal would come from. He didn't know where his next dollar would come from. But he knew that God would always take care of him no matter what happened. I, I couldn't help but think, you know, so, this will tell my age a little bit and some of you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. Most of you, most of you will, don't laugh. Most of you will know what I'm talking about. Anybody remember Popeye the Sailor Man? All right, you remember Wimpy? How many of you remember his phrase? I will gladly pay you Tuesday for the price of a hamburger today. Wimpy never had any money. He was always broke. And that was his saying in life. And that was kind of Paul's thing. Paul, Paul, for Paul, Tuesday just like Wimpy. Tuesday never came. Paul didn't have anything. He was dependent upon the other people to help him. But he had a firm belief that God would always supply his need in life. Whatever it was he needed. Whether it was God divinely raining down something from heaven above. Or whether it was a church that he had started or ministered in that would send him some type of a gift. Paul always was taken care of because God supplied his need. And what we need to understand is that God will always take care of us. He will supply our needs as well. Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs, he said that the generous soul shall be made rich and he who waters will also be watered himself. What Solomon was saying was that if you're willing to give and you're willing to bless others, God will bless you. You know, I couldn't help but think of, of the story in 1 Kings chapter 17 when Elijah ha had predicted that it wasn't going to rain or prophesied that it wasn't going to rain for six months. And uh, a terrible drought came. 
And he was out in the wilderness for a while. He camped by a little brook and the, the, the brook gave him the water he needed and the ravens of the uh, field brought him food to eat. But finally, if you know, when it gets dry, it doesn't rain for a long period of time, the brook dries up. So God instructed Elijah to go down to this certain town and he said, you're going to find a widow woman there. Tell her to make you a cake. Now what he was talking about wasn't a cake. But it was a loaf of bread, basically. And so Elijah goes down to the city and he finds the woman. She's gathering sticks. And he says, go home and bake me a cake. Now, kind of seemed like a strange request. I think it would to the lady anyway. She's out gathering sticks and some stranger walks up and says, hey, did you go bake me a cake? She, she said, here's the situation I'm in. I've got just enough meal. And just enough oil to make one cake. And that's all I've got left to my name. I'm gathering these sticks to build a fire. I'm going to go home and I'm going to bake a cake for me and my son. And we're going to divide it in half and we're going to eat it. And we're going to sit down and wait to die because that's all we've got in life. Now, Elijah was very sympathetic to her situation. He said, I said, go home and make me a cake. So she was obedient. She went home and made him a cake and gave him the cake and she went and looked and there was enough meal and enough oil for another cake. And for many days, the Bible said that she made Elijah a cake and she made her and her son a cake and the meal never ran out and the oil never ran dry because you can't outgive God. Yeah. And when you become a blessing to other people, God will pour out His blessing upon you. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened with this widow woman. The generous soul will be made rich. She had all she needed until the rain finally came. We began to grow and she had more flour or meal and stuff for the cake. But she had... All that she needed because she gave as God had instructed her through the prophet Elijah to do. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians, he said, But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. You're going to get back in return the way you give. So let each one of us give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Now, many people when you come to church and somebody starts talking about giving, they instantly think, oh no, he's wanting money. <laughs> and we're not talking about money. We're talking about being willing to give of ourselves. Give of what God, you know, what does the song say? So blessed. How many of us here this morning would say, I am so blessed. Amen. Why does God bless us? So we can bless others. Right. So we can help. Why do I have? So I can give to other people who need yes. And God, as it said, God loves a cheerful giver. God does not want us to give uh, grudgingly. He doesn't want us to give. Oh, I feel like compelled to give, so I've got to give. He wants us to give because we have a desire to meet others' needs and, and bless other people. Sometimes giving does involve money, but uh, we must be willing to give of ourselves as this widow woman. All that she had, she thought, was enough to make one little cake. But she had enough for many days. When we give of ourselves, when we give uh, uh, cheerfully, it's then that God can bless us as we bless other people. As Paul said, not some of our needs, but all of our needs. God, my God, shall supply all your need. That's what he told this church at Philippi. Every need that you have, God's going to bless that need simply because you're willing to give to others and bless other people. 
You know, we think about what is it that we need in life. Think about the woman with the issue of blood. If you remember the story, the Bible said she had suffered with this issue of blood for 12 long years. She had spent everything that she had on the physicians and she could not be healed. But she thought to herself, if I reach out, if I just touch his garment, I'll be healed. And as Jesus passed by, her faith reached out and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus stopped in the midst of that crowd. He said, somebody touch me. His disciples thought he was crazy. <laughs> Jesus, we're in a crowd. Everybody's touching you. He said, no. I felt virtue leave my body. Somebody touched me. This woman had reached out because of her faith. She reached out and touched Him. And Jesus said, your faith has made thee whole. She was touched. She was healed. Twelve years she had suffered with the disease. But when she reached out and touched Jesus, her need was met. We've been studying the book of Mark. We studied about the man called Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the side of the road. He heard Jesus was passing by. Somebody undoubtedly had told him about Jesus. He had heard stories about how Jesus had healed other people. And he began to cry out, Jesus, have mercy on me. They tried to quieten him down, but Bartimaeus wasn't going to be still. He cried out to Jesus. And as Jesus passed by, he beckoned for Bartimaeus to come to him. They brought Bartimaeus to him. He said, what do you want me to do? Bartimaeus said, I want my sight. And he was healed. His need was met. Sometimes we have to recognize what our need is. Bartimaeus had his need met because he reached out to Jesus. There, I don't know how many dozens and dozens of stories in the Bible of people that Jesus touched as He passed by. That Jesus' son, He went directly to that person to, to their home or, or, or met Him somewhere by the wayside. And He met their need because they cried out to Him. Do we cry out to Jesus? Do we recognize what our need is? God is still able to meet. You know, we take prayer requests. And we don't say, well, now if you're sick, don't, don't give that prayer request because God doesn't heal people anymore. If He healed 2,000 years ago, He still heals today because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if our need is a physical need in life, we need to reach out to Jesus to have that need met. thought about the story when men came to, to Peter. And of course, they were always coming to Jesus, coming to the disciples and trying to find some fault with Jesus so they could accuse Him of something and get rid of Him. And, and they questioned Him about paying taxes. Now we all love paying taxes. I mean, we're all excited about April 15th rolling around. I know. But it said, you and your teacher, do y'all pay the temple tax? And so, Peter, I believe it was, came to Jesus and said, what about the taxes? Do we pay that? Jesus said, I'll tell you what. He said, go down to the river. Malcolm, let me ask you, has this ever happened to you? I asked Malcolm because I know Malcolm's a fisherman. He said, catch a fish, and the first fish you catch, look in his mouth. Peter goes down, he catches a fish, opens his mouth, and what's there? Two coins. Two coins. One for Jesus, one for Peter. They go pay the temple tax. Not only can God meet our physical needs, whatever those needs would be, He's also capable of meeting our financial needs as well. And now I will get into the giving part. You know the best way to have God meet your financial needs? Tithe. You know, it don't make sense if I can't make it on 100% of my income, 
to give 10% of it to the church and think I can make it on 90%. But I challenge you to try it. It works. It works. And if you notice, we didn't take an offering. There's a basket at the door. If you'd like to give, give. We believe that we don't take your offering. We believe you give it. But God is able to meet our every need. Like Brother Andy told a story a few weeks back about a, 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 a widow woman that, that just barely made it in life and she ran out of food. And she happened to live beside an atheist who was always making fun of her about praying and believing in God and stuff. And he heard her praying one, one day that how she was out of food and she needed food. She didn't have any money. And so the old atheist went down and bought her some groceries and set them on her doorstep and rang the doorbell and then run and hid. She came out and saw the groceries and said, Praise the Lord! God has brought, brought me some groceries. And the old atheist jumped out and said, God didn't bring those I did. She said, Praise the Lord! God brought me some groceries and made the devil pay for them. <laughs> God will provide. He may make the devil provide it for you, but God will provide. He always meets our needs, whatever those needs would be. The physical needs, the financial needs, and without question, God and God alone can meet your spiritual needs. The psalmist wrote these words. Help us, O God of our salvation. For the glory of your name, deliver us and provide atonement for our sins for your name's sake. In this particular psalm, Psalms 79, Israel was being invaded by the enemy, which occurred many times because uh, they just refused to follow God, disobedient. And in the prayer, he prayed that they would be delivered from the enemy and that God would atone for their sins. God still delivers us today. Our enemy is not the Muslim nation. It's not the atheist. It's not the agnostic. Our enemy is the devil. Yes. And God still delivers us today from Him and He is the only one that can deliver us. <clears throat> I, just recently I was reading an article uh, it, was, uh, it was entitled something in the nature of is there only one way to heaven? And, and it, it is amazing to me anyway. You know, I guess it shouldn't be the way the direction the world's going. But the percentage of people in the church that believe there's many ways to heaven. I, I mean, it's, it's almost come down to 50-50. To 50% 50 of the people in the church believe there's many roads that will lead you to heaven. The Bible says there's one way. Amen. There is one way and that way is Jesus Christ. Amen. No other way. No other person. None can get you to heaven. God still meets our needs. He still delivers us from the enemy and He is the only way unto heaven. You know, you remember the, the story of Abraham. Abraham was promised a son. And many years passed by and Abraham didn't have a son. Matter of fact, he was promised that he would be a father of many nations. He said, your descendants will be as the sands of the sea or the stars of the sky. But he didn't have any children. So it's hard to imagine how your descendants will be that number and you have no children. But when he was a hundred years old, he finally had a son. One son. God said, your only son. He said, here's what I want you to do, Abraham. I know I told you you're going to be a father of many nations, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your one and only son. 
I want you to take him up on the mountain and I want you to offer him as a sacrifice to me. Abraham was obedient. Next morning he rose early. He got the wood, he got the fire. Him and Isaac and some servants, they began to make this journey. They began to journey and they going up the mountain. Isaac undoubtedly had been taught the things of God. Because as he was going up the mountain, Isaac said, Dad, we got the wood, we got the fire, but something's missing. Abraham said, what's that, son? He said, the sacrifice, where's the lamb? We don't have the sacrifice. Abraham said, don't worry about it, son. God will provide. He took Isaac up to the top of the mountain. He built the altar. They got everything ready. And then he placed Isaac upon the altar. He raised the knife to slay his son, his one and only son. And the voice of God spoke. He said, don't harm your son. I don't want you to offer him as a sacrifice. I only needed to know you were willing and obedient. And he said he turned and there was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. Why? Because God provided the sacrifice. Just like he provides the sacrifice today. God still provides the sacrifice. Uh, last week we, we shared in communion. What is communion? It is the, the celebration of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. The one that gave his life, that shed his blood, that had his body torn, beaten, and broken for you and I. The lamb that God provided. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Again, Paul was thanking the church for supplying their needs. And God still supplies the needs of his children today. We need to ask ourselves, are we willing to be a blessing to others and help them in life as God helps us? As God blesses us, do we bless others, which enables God to bless us? Luke chapter 8, or chapter 6, there's a scripture that says, Give and it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Do you know what it says? It says, shall men give unto your bosom. It doesn't say God will give to you. Although God gives us many things and blesses us in many ways. He says when we give to bless others, to minister to others, God can open up the windows of heaven and rain down man upon us, but He can cause other people to give to us as well. Just like He caused the atheist to buy the widow woman's groceries. He can cause us to do that. Will you allow God to meet your needs this morning? Whatever your needs are. And if you have this morning, are you willing to give to meet someone else's needs so that God can bless you for blessing them? Let's pray. Father, we thank you again this morning that you allowed us to come and to share your word. And Father, we thank You for the many blessings that You bestow upon us each day of our lives. We thank You that You love us, You care about us. Most of all, Father, we're thankful that You have provided the Lamb, the perfect sacrifice for our sins. And Father, we pray this morning that we'll each examine our hearts and our lives before You. Father, if we have and we're able to bless others, Father, we pray that we'll do that. We speak to our hearts. Show us how we might be a greater blessing to other people. Father, if we have not, pray, Father, that we'll humble ourselves in your presence and allow you to meet our needs. Father, most of all, we pray this morning if there be one here today that's never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of the life, Father, we pray the greatest need that a person will ever have in life will be met this morning by yielding themselves to the leadership of the Holy Spirit.
coming forward and receiving Christ as Lord and Savior because we know He is the only way. We thank you for each one that's come out this morning. We ask your richest blessings upon each person here. We pray that we'll be a blessing to you and blessing to others. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I ask you to stand with me this morning as we close. As always, as we close with the song, we just ask.